So, with that we wrap up the dimensionality reduction uh, problem and move on to the next unsupervised learning problem which is that of density estimation. Density estimation is uh, the, the output of a density estimation learning algorithm is a probabilistic model. Recall that I had mentioned earlier the probabilistic model is a model which essentially scores different configurations uh, of uh, reality. For example, let us say your goal is to build a model which can generate more tweets which look very similar to already uh, generated tweets. Right? So, assuming tweets from an account are independently generated randomly, your goal is to create a robot account that generates more such tweets. Right? Uh, here is a uh, here is such a site built uh, called wisdom of Chopra.com where uh, it has been uh, said by some that the thoughts and tweets of Mr. Chopra are indistinguishable from a set of profound uh, sounding words put together in a random order. Right? So, based on this they built a probabilistic model and which generates tweets that look similar to uh, the tweets of Mr. Chopra. Right? Uh, this is, is an example of how you can use a density or a density estimation or a probabilistic model uh, for uh, to generate robots. Right? So, whenever someone wants to generate a robot Twitter account effectively a density estimation is the main uh, tool that is used here. So, what is what uh, does a density estimation uh, algorithm give you? It gives you a probabilistic model which scores all tweets right. Effectively tweet is something uh, is a is a 128 length array right. So, that is let us say for example, a tweet is a 128 uh, length uh, character array which in, th in this case what you need is a scoring function which would score any x such that tweets x belonging to 26 power 128 right. So, I am assuming that you are writing always in lower case. So, you uh, take there are 26 possible outputs for each space 27 if you include a space and 128 characters. So, that is the total number of legal tweets possible. Right? So, your f of x would essentially take such a thing and it would say how likely was this tweet, uh, how likely is that this particular tweet can be generated by uh, Mr. Chopra. Right? So, that is how do you get such a, um, this, is, this is a probabilistic model and constructing such a probabilistic model is the goal of density estimation. To generate such uh, sentences randomly, we need to be able to assign a probability score to every possible 128 character sentence giving high scores to those that are likely to be from the original source. Right? Uh, how does it do that? Well, a density estimation model takes in several samples from a random source. For in this case, it would take several samples from the original uh, Twitter stream and it will output a model, a probabilistic model that assigns a probability score to every possible instance. So, by every possible instance we mean every possible tweet right. So, you can give you can say what is the probability that uh, uh, apple is bad. Right, you should be able to uh, the output of the learning algorithm in the case of a density estimation would simply be a function which would be able to say what is the probability that apple is bad right. So, this is a sentence apple is bad is one possible output and you can ask the question what is the probability that this particular tweet is generated by Mr. Chopra. In mathematical terms once again your data is which would be a collection of tweets maybe collection of n tweets x1 to xn where each data point is a d dimensional vector. The goal of a density estimation learning algorithm is uh, a probability mapping p which is a mapping from rd to r plus. So, it is only positive numbers are allowed and here is a key thing it must sum to 1 right. That is the reason why you uh, that would mean that sum over x in 26 power 128 probability of x should be equal to 1. So, that, that uh, you cannot give very high scores to all the tweets that is just not possible so, because each uh, each tweet has to have a positive score or 0 score, but the total probability of 
the total score has to be equal to 1. So that is the goal. The goal of uh, a density estimation algorithm is to come up with such a probability model. And what probability models are desirable? What is the loss function for this? The goal is that if p of x is large, if your x belongs to this data and it should be low otherwise, that is the goal here. And of course, it can be large uh, otherwise also if the, if the data is some x is very similar to an already existing data. Right? So the loss that is used is called the negative log likelihood. which is simply defined as follows. For each data point x i, you want your p of x i to be as large as possible. Or in other words, you want your negative log of p of x i to be as small as possible. What is the ideal case scenario? The ideal case scenario would be you would have log of p of x i would be equal to 1 by m or it does not matter. So, p of x i would be very high for x1 to p of x1 would be high, p of x2 would be high, p of x3 would be high, p of xn would all of that would be high. So, that minus log of p of x i would be small and when you sum this over and average over all the n data points, this would be small. Right? So, this is the average negative log likelihood. Your goal of a density estimation algorithm is to come up with a probability model or a probability mapping p which has as uh, small a negative log likelihood as possible. Right. Here is here are a couple of examples of how to do that. Right. Here is a very simple illustration problem. Right. Let us say you have your uh, in this case d is equal to 1, you have just one dimensional data and uh, let us say your data you have 4 data points this is n equal to 4, the data points are given by let us say x1 is equal to let's say 2.3 x sorry about the superscript should be a superscript let's say x1 is equal to 2.3 x2 is equal to let's say 2.7 x3 is equal to let's say 4.6 x4 is let's say equal to 4.9 okay. so you have four uh, data points let us uh, maybe plot that as on the number line, right. So, from 0 to 10, you have 2.3 and 2.7, and you also have 4.6 and 4.9. You have these four data points. Now, once again, in the, in the spirit of things that we have done uh, so far, uh, we will give a bunch of models and we will ask the density estimation algorithm to choose the best model out of these, right. So, what are the models here? Okay, so, the first model we can consider is that P of x is equal to 1 by 10 if x belongs to 0 to 10 and 0 otherwise. So, I forgot to mention, so in this case you are, it is not a discrete uh, thing like uh, a tweet where you can take only one of 26 possible values. So, here your x can take a real valued thing, uh, x is a real valued uh, instance. Right? So, summing to 1 is essentially replaced by integrating to 1. Right? So, that is why I have 1 by 10, 0 to 10. Right? So, if you integrate this function over the real line, you will get the, the value would be equal to 1. So, that is why I am using 1 by 10. So, this is one possible probability model. Let us have another probability model, p of x is equal to let us say 1 by 5 if x belongs to 0 to 5 and 0 otherwise. This is also a valid probability model. Right? So, then we will use finally we will use another model uh, call it p1, p2 and let us say call this p3. p3 of x is equal to 1 by 5 if x belongs to let us say 3 comma 8, x is between 3 and 8 it is 1 by 5 and 0 otherwise. All these 3 are valid probability models. Now, uh, I just want the learning algorithm to choose between these 3 models. Which of these 3 has 
the lowest negative log likelihood, right? So if you, you could compute that, uh, let us do that, right? Let us uh, recall the uh, data once again, it is 2.3, 2 2.6, 4.9, right. What uh, would the scores of each of these components, let us uh, 2.3, 2.6, 4.7, 4.9. according to P1, P1 is just uniform between 0 to 10, right? So, it would give a score of 1 by 10, 1 by 10, 1 by 10, 1 by 10 for all of these 4 points. P2 is uniform within 0 to 5, but it would give a score of 1 by 5, 1 by 5, 1 by 5, 1 by 5. P3 is uniform. in the range of 3 to 8, which means that according to P3, the uh, the score for 2.3 and 2.6 should actually be 0 and 1 by 5, 1 by 5. You can compute the negative log likelihood that is loss of the model P1 would be minus log 1 by 10 minus log 1 by 10 minus log 1 by 10 minus log 1 by 10. So, this would be the loss of the probabilistic model P1. What would be the loss of P2? That would be minus log 1 by 5 minus log 1 by 5 minus log 1 by 5 minus log 1 by 5. What would be the loss of P3? Here is a thing here you would have minus log of 0. It's in, it actually does not matter what you write for the rest of the things because minus log of 0 is already infinity. Log of 0 is minus infinity and minus log of 0 is infinity. So, the loss of the model P3 is going to be infinity regardless of how the other things are going to be. So, you can clearly see that loss of P1 and loss of P2 are going to be not infinity. So, which is better? You can clearly see once again that loss of P2 is going to be smaller than loss of P1. So, P2 is the better probabilistic model for explaining this data than P1 and it seems logical. Right? So, P1 says that these 4 data points are coming from uniformly between 0 to 10. P2 is saying that it is these data points are coming uniformly between 0 to 5. P2 seems to be a better model than P1 for this particular data. Of course, I am not saying that is the best model uh, in the context of this particular toy problem. P2 is better than P1 because P2 has lower negative log likelihood than P1. So, uh, in a real density estimation model would not once again be given multiple choice questions like this it would not be given P1, P2 and P3, it would actually be, it would actually find the best probabilistic model from an infinite set of models, okay. So, uh, that is one example, let us move on to another example. So, so here is uh, another uh, example, let us say you have uh, 9 points. No? So, here is uh, a slightly more complicated uh, class of models which you can estimate. Let us say you have uh, uh, 9 data points, I am just finding, okay, yeah. I am not going to write down the 9 points here, these are the 9 points. I have uh, uh, put an X in the Cartesian plane for illustration these 9 points. Okay. So, you can have uh, 2 models now, one model is a Gaussian mixture model which says that the data is centered around 3. P1 is a Gaussian, I am not going to explain what the Gaussian mixture model is right now, but broadly what it is saying is so Gaussian mixture model centered at uh, 
0 comma 0 and 4 comma 1 and let us say 7 comma 3. That is one Gaussian motion model and there is another uh, Gaussian motion model which says that this is data centered around 3 possible centers just let us say 5 comma 5. 8 comma 9 minus 1 comma minus 2 which is a better uh, model right. I am not going to go into the numerical details but you can immediately see that out of these two models you have you can look at the data and you can see that uh, it seems to have 3 centers. One center around here and one center around here and another center around here. So, based on this P1 is a much better explanation for this data than P2. So, you are if you had actually computed the negative log likelihood of these two models P1 and P2 and chosen the model with the lesser negative log likelihood you would have chosen P1. Once again real density estimation models do not have multiple choice questions, but rather they are given an entire parametric family of models and they choose one the uh, the model among this infinite models which uh, which has the least negative log likelihood or which has the least loss in this particular case. Uh, this is once again uh, there are several extensions possible to this uh, based on here in the previous case we had uniform uh, the models were all uniform here in this case we had uh, the models were all Gaussian mixture models. You can have several other examples in the same way that uh, you had for regression and uh, classification and dimensionality reduction. You can have similar other examples for density estimation also. And with that I think you have a broad overview of the two main unsupervised learning problems which are dimensionality reduction and density estimation. With that we will wrap up the introductory week of uh, the machine learning foundations course and later on in the course we will dig deeper into all of these learning problems and actually come up with ways to uh, is to formulate the learning algorithm in the full power of it that is to find the best model in the entire model uh, in, in, the, in the entire class of models in the entire library of models which is how do you write how do you construct learning algorithms which finds the best model among an infinite family of models that we will uh, cover later in the course when we do individual problems which are highlighted as special cases of uh, the tools that you will learn throughout the course. That will wrap up the first week. Thank you.